Welcome to 91 Reasons, a pop culture fueled rocket into the far reaches of nerd culture. Featuring your hosts, Jeff, Rachel, Luna, Austin, and Josie, it's Tucker time. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the voice and of I'm Austin Tucker. Aust- hey, the, 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 I'm throwing it to you. Oh, I didn't know I that. Wait till throw. Let's start, start over. Throw. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the voice of Austin Tucker. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy 18 days to the New Year, and Happy 5 days till Star War. So, I see you've all been having an eventful holiday season, and we are here to enlighten you on your holiday, to spread a little bit of Christmas cheer along your way. Okay. We are Do you here. have any porgs? Yes, we have a cavalcade of porgs Good. and festive lights and cavalcade? presents. Cavalcade? I like porgs. All what that- is a cavalcade? I'm the cavalcade sorry. is like a, a full company. I'm sorry, your vocabulary is still not above grade five, so if you will just please. <laughs> and he's one of your contemporaries. You. No. Josie has a problem with the word contemporary. No, that's like, contemporary is like commentary, right? No. 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 They a satellite? Yeah. Uh, no. So, I know that. here at the 91 Reasons Conglomerate, we've been Congl- contemplating oh, wait, wait. the holiday Are you season. English? And we've been doing some pondering, you know, some wondering about the holidays to try and reconcile some memories to remember some mementos of the past and sort of integrate them and streamline them into our show, you know? So yeah. Calm down. <laughs> mementos. You know what I got for Christmas? A uh, carton uh, of cigarettes. My dad pulled me aside. He's like, hey, smoke up, Jeffrey. Oh, mm-hmm. what's, this movie line? what's that from? I don't know. Breakfast, Breakfast Club. Club. Oh. Well, give someone else a chance, maybe. Oh, sorry. I got a dictionary for Christmas, which I've is why I'm reading movie. this amazing How can you never see Breakfast Club? I've never seen it. All right, welcome, everybody, to 91 Reasons. I'm The Voice. I'm Jeff Tucker. I am joined by the entire Tucker family here. Rachel. Rachel. Mom. Jose. Jose. Austin Tucker. I'm here, too, Luna. Yeah. Luna's barely here. Luna looks like uh, the Unabomber in that uh, hoodie. Are you Christmas out, Scrooge? Austin's in a freaking fox costume. Yeah, I am. You're dressed in a full fox. And according to Josie, the tank top I'm wearing is less than a bikini. Furry costume. Oh, I don't understand. I look fabulous. Well, there's one thing we've learned this year. As Josie turned 12 this year, we've learned she's a Puritan of the utmost degree. They like can't show a, a a ankle. prude, a Puritan, you yes. know? She's like, a boy will like me if he sees my ankle. And that's about it. That's all he's getting, too, with yeah. her. Look when a man's this... head would turn at the sight of a shapely ankle. If this was like 1876, man, he'd be swooning in the hole. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You'd have some nice... I'm like... not complaining. I'm just saying it's interesting. She's our little Mormon. Good little joke. Most kids rebel against their mom. And since your mom's basically done everything, <laughs> this is I the know, only way to rebel. She's rebelling She's rebelling by going the right wackiness. path. <laughs> I'm wearing a fox costume, so there's no saving me. Yeah, yeah we well, know that. Y- you're going to Furcon, right? Absolutely. Oh, you're so. <laughs> Cali Fur happens every June. Cali Fur. I'd I'm love sorry. to go. <laughs> well, it's your birthday month. Cali Why have we never made that happen? I don't know. I'm not going. <laughs> For him. No, no. We'll there, someone, has to, someone has to. Someone has to go with him. He can go. You can go. I could go on my own. I'm sure there's some listener I out there that would like to go safe. to Furcon with Austin. Yeah. See? Austin, to go there? Send your request to us. You'd be unleashed. We shall screen you. Oh. <laughs> Maybe we could just talk Zach into it. He usually goes along for anything. Do you want to go to a foy con with me, Zach? I'm so sorry. I am so, <laughs> so sorry. It's got to be more exciting than when you and your mom went to Mother Boy. What? <laughs> Are you talking about our Cure concert? Mother Boy. That we, was an awesome We watched time. a live old man fall apart. Yeah, the cure wasn't so You're great. You're talking about Robert Smith, right? But, but yeah. the memory of the The memory. Going awesome. there, eating, checking out L.A., that was all That's fun. the day we saw the Jungle Book? Yes. Apparently, you guys decided to go to City Walk without us. Yes. Well, yeah, you guys were at we a concert. We also drove down this weird street that reminded me of Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We're getting way off of Christmas. I'm just saying. Christmas! Oh, Christmas! Christmas! Christmas. Christmas. That's a who watches you while you sleep. We are what? Two weeks from Christmas now? Two weeks from today, yes. And tomorrow is Hanukkah. What's tomorrow that? is the 12th day, of, of, 12th day, which means there's 12 more days left until Christmas. 
Yes, because you're doing your countdown every night. We all, if anyone follows me on Facebook, they I mean, have to mean everyone. Your, well, your videos nightly but, of your countdown. I'm getting people requesting the bear. 12 plus 12 is 24. What's your countdown. You get the bears. So I've been answering well, that to everybody. Yeah, they're, they're debating now. When, when does Christmas begin? Because there was a huge the debate about Christmas Eve Eve. You guys are always talking about Oh, yeah, about. Christmas Eve Eve. Our house, the kids celebrate Christmas Eve Eve. Yeah. They get more excited Eve, about that. Eve. Because listen, listen, listen. Oh. Christmas is about getting gifts, and it's about being with the family, and it's about watching the specials or reading the books. That all starts on Christmas Eve. Right. So, so Christmas Eve Eve. Eve Eve is the night before the holiday. You, if so, you ask someone what would Christmas Eve was, they would say, "Oh, it's the night before the big holiday." But the big holiday starts on Christmas Eve, so you got to go before that. And that's why you all make such. A because big it's the most deal. boring day of the entire year. Well, it is. Christmas it Eve, really is. Eve. Now I don't Christmas know. Christmas Eve Eve. Nearly every Christmas Eve Eve, Luna decides to start new saves on every video game you own. Because you're that bored. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I'm going to play through all of Spyro well, the Dragon You won't be today. bored this year. You'll be working at Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be at Starbucks till 2 a.m. in the heyday. You have to wish everybody who comes to the drive through a happy Christmas Eve Eve Eve. Uh-huh. Yes. That is a must. You have to. Make sure you go to the Wayne Park oh, Starbucks. I think too many Eves. It's Christmas Cross Eve Eve. Chris- happy Eve holiday Eve Eve, Eve Eve. Unless that holiday is Hanukkah, then I'm like a week late. Yeah, that's <laughs> All right, so what are we talking about, Rachel? I thought it'd be fun just to talk about a favorite Christmas morning. Um, a memory. Mine favorite? would be the 25th of I'll December. Or, or your... That's my favorite Christmas <laughs> like morning. Like, what gift out of your childhood do you remember getting the most? What you were the most shocked right. by? Or just the most Josie, excited Josie, you want to go first? No, no thanks. I good. think you should go first. You're our host. Yes. Take us back in time to the, to the 70s. magical we world of the back. 70s. We have to go the furthest back. Everybody's got bell the bottoms and and, a... and little Jeffrey Tucker sitting the Christmas It was 1978. Jimmy <laughs> Carter was president. <laughs> Who? Hello, I'm Jimmy Carter. I'm a one-term president. Would you like to be a peanut? <laughs> yeah, peanut guy. They haven't taught us about him. Luna. What's to tell about Jimmy <laughs> Nothing happened during his presidency except the Iran... Uh, uh, hostage affair, which Reagan took care of. Let's not get political. Right. <laughs> Christmas well, morning. Hon- so, this is Jimmy Carter. I want to wish you a happy Merry Christmas, 1978. Well, 1978 was the first year you could get Star Wars toys for Christmas. So, this had been building up for a long time. And I, had, I was very clear with my mother. I want Star Wars toys for Christmas. So I got a lot of Star Wars toys. It was the first big haul of Star Wars toys. I got the Sears Cantina Adventure Set with the rare blue Snaggletooth at the time. Just another figure in the, in the, in the collection. Pretty cool figure. I got a 12-back Darth Vader, a 12-back Death Star Commander. Jennifer got a 12-back Princess Leia. I got a 12-back uh, Jawa, but it was cloth cape. I got a die-cast uh, TIE Fighter. And uh, I think I might have gotten the land speeder too. Like it was. I think you have a picture of that Christmas. It was quite a bit of Star Wars stuff. Your spread. And I just, that was it. I mean, talk about like life changing. Like you get these toys. How am and I then, supposed to compete with that? Well, it's not a competition. <laughs> Please, no wagering. So you get all these Star Wars toys, and then you have a kid, and you name him Luke Skywalker. Like this is life changing. The funny part is, is. I didn't get a Luke Skywalker figure that first Christmas. Oh, I did. Oh, wait, wait. I didn't get the action figure. I got the 12-inch doll. And for some reason, that was my favorite toy of all time. I played with that doll every day. He had a lightsaber. He had a grappling hook. He had a belt. He had boots that you couldn't take off because if you did, you wouldn't get them back on. And that was the coolest toy ever. My 12-inch Luke Skywalker. I still have him. He's in the case in there. It was the greatest Christmas ever. Um... My mother was going through a divorce at the time. I don't think I don't remember if Jerry was there or not at seventy eight. I can't remember. If the memories I have are good, odds are he wasn't there. He well, might I'm have sure been. Your brother will be texting. Uh, yeah, and J- Jerry was there drunk, man. So His memory is um, better than yours since he was. Older. Because Jerry's Christmases were like this: you'd get up, uh, you'd, no breakfast, straight to opening gifts at like you know four in the morning, right? But the minute you opened it, Jerry was there collecting. The uh, wrapping paper. Well, and putting I do it in a, that. In a trash bag. That. No, no, no. My mother would keep gifts in a trash bag. So one Christmas, he threw them all out. Yeah, that's what All I the know. gifts. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Josie feels my pain. Other than that, 
Every year after that, I got Star Wars toys for Christmas, with 1983 being the big culmination because that was the last year of Star Wars toys. The last year, I was really hardcore collecting, but that was the year I got my Darth Vader helmet from Disneyland, which I still have today, and I wore it all day because I wanted to. And now I was like, I'm going to collect the big stuff, you know. I had all the toys. Now I need to collect the Darth Vader helmet, the Don Post Darth Vader helmet. It was fantastic. Nice. Yeah. You still have it all. It's great. I have it all. Follow that, killer. <laughs> well, Mom. Yeah, Rachel. Can okay. I even follow? Can I, can I do two stories? You can do whatever you want. Because one's a downer, so I want to end it on, oh a, on the Christmas oh. that follows. A after. Christmas well, downer? One but year, can I tell you that even though every I'm just, time I, she, I just wanted to say, she, she tells it, I, I die in Just time. real quick. Uh, my dad wanted to surprise us all for Christmas, but he never came home that night. Okay, now and be a few quiet. weeks later, mine, when we lit a fire, it started to smell. Mine is... And they found him in the chimney. Is it Santa. Okay. He had broken his neck. Can you stop? <laughs> mine Do you know what that downer. is? No, I don't even care. So mine is a downer. <laughs> but it had a good ending. And then the next Christmas, that was directly after that. I think the next year. I think it was 83 and 84. Well, give it to us. Um. Okay, so we decided to go because we were living in Vegas at the time because my dad loved to move us. So as a child... I was never in one place long. I lived all over the place. But our central hub is California. That's where my sisters were, and that's where we would always come back to. So we lived in Vegas during this year. I want to say early 80s. Maybe 81 or 82. Anyways, we drove to California to my sister's house. So we could spend Christmas with my sister. She had two daughters that were exactly my ages, so we all wanted to be together for the holidays. And they went... I don't, it was like, I don't know why they did so much that year. I don't know if it was a good income year for the family. What happened for us? But my sister and my mother went overboard in shopping and made every childhood wish we could ever want. That was the year they were going to tell you you were adopted, but they just never Uh, got around to it. No, I'm serious. Like, we were struggling at this age because I think we were about 10 because I was born in 71, so it must have been about 81. Um, And we were like wanting to do teeny teenage things already and cared about how we looked in certain brands and wanting certain clothes and Jordash and that ooh la la what is that ooh la la la, 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 yeah okay both of those jeans were the hot ticket why no matter what jeans you are you've got the look the Jordash Brooke Shields said I needed to wear them and that was good enough for me no she wore Calvin Klein's Oh, she wore Calvin Klein. Yeah. I had her Barbie. Remember, she'd go. That's right. Was nothing comes Klein. between me and my Calvin Klein. So, well, I needed Jordash. That's the ones I wanted the most. My mom made all three well, of us. Well, Jordash is the one with the horse on the back. Yes. Oh and yeah. There's pictures. I'll oh yeah. No, I get it. In my childhood album of this Christmas, I have don't have the items anymore, but I See, have the pictures. What's different? What your kids don't understand is that we couldn't fast forward through commercials. So when the commercials came on, we watched them. We watched so many commercials that more than the programs we watched, subliminally, the commercials shaped our lives. When I watch them on YouTube now, it's shocking how many I remember. Going off my story. Okay, so, so we, all we wanted was Jordache. So we got it that morning. We got all, all the jeans we wanted. We had matching sweatshirts. We had a red sweatshirt that had a big horse on it, which makes sense now because you're saying... Jordache has a yeah, horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Anyways, I have pictures of us modeling all these outfits. I had my dream wardrobe to go back to Vegas and be the coolest person in January at school. And on on the toy line, I was very into strawberry shortcake. I just love them. And my mom bought everything. The bakery set, the little snail they ride on, the miniature house, every like 30 of the little miniatures. Everything you would ever want, strawberry shortcake. So we packed it all in the trunk and we're headed home and we're driving through the desert and... I think we were near somewhere called Needles, which I don't really understand that part of the story now, direction-wise, because when I was a kid, mm-hmm. you just go to Vegas. Yeah. Well, I go to Vegas as an adult now, and I've never passed somewhere called Needles. So I don't know how that happened, but somehow we went to Needles, or we were in Needles when I it happened. I work with Needles down at the plant. So Needles, California, out there somewhere in the desert. How we got there, I don't know. But our car caught on fire. And I'm not talking a little fire. We're driving along in the middle of nowhere. And thank God there was these like young teenage boys driving behind us because there's nowhere out in the middle of nowhere. And they just happened to be there. And they saw flames under our car. And they started honking and going crazy. And about the time they started getting our attention to it, my sister looked down and saw flames coming up the middle of her feet up in the driver's seat. So we pulled over. I remember literally being thrown out a window. Like doors didn't even open. I was just thrown out a window onto the ground. 
We got out of the car. Everybody was fine. Nobody got hurt. But the car was a complete, total loss, including everything in the trunk. My entire Christmas. I yeah. hate this story. You hate so this story. Much. And she tells it all the time to every person she meets. At every time, <laughs> it hurts more and but more. But it happened. It was a story. It happened. But you want to know what's amazing is that I have amazing family. And within that year, I would say... Within the year, every single thing that had been in the trunk had been rebought for me. So it's not like I didn't get those toys. You didn't bury it in the snow like Bart when he melts all the gifts no. together. Are you finding needles there. on the map? You take the Is 40 instead of the 91. Why would my family go that way? It's the longest route you could possibly I take. Why they'd go that Nobody way. calls me chicken we, needles. Nobody. Were, okay, if anyone in my family knows, do you think we were sightseeing? Do you think we... What's the sightseeing on Christmas Day? There's no traffic. This was after Christmas. We stayed through Christmas oh. and came back. Maybe there was. Well, let me ask wanted you a question. Go. My family loved road trips. Your dad was into some shady stuff. He wasn't with us that Christmas. He was traveling. It's getting even involved. Uh, your dad was into some shady stuff. My dad worked for the mafia. Do you How think was that, shady? that was, was the Christmas? <laughs> Do you think that was the Christmas he sent like a check? Well, it could be. To the buy all that stuff. All that yeah, stuff. that's what I'm could asking. Be. Yeah. Our and do you think the car catching on fire was the mafia going? Take the stuff away oh, from the kid. Oh, maybe you're not mafia <laughs> stuff. I didn't even know. Oh, what? You, you, know, know? you never know. You know your dad. dad's like, I'm going to check. They'll buy the, the presents with the money. The money's laundered. And the mafia's like, I want to see that car no, on fire, Tommy. No, you think Tommy. you're joking, but like, that was pretty much every friend my dad yeah, had. It, it really looks like you'll only ever end up in Needles if you were heading to Arizona. We would never be going to Arizona. Then you're taking a that's a long winded route to Las Vegas well, we with were no doing reason. Out in the middle of that desert, Maybe you but... were avoiding the hitmen. <laughs> this could be true. We came to our house many a times, but that's a whole other podcast. Hop okay, along, so, Could you come and take a picture? Anyways, I got it all back because I was spoiled. Okay, now the next year and um, was the year of the Cabbage Patch dolls. Uh huh. The I best the story dolls of this ever. One. I don't know this one. The Cabbage Patch doll. Yes. This is Christmas 83 or 84. Yes. yes. And me and my nieces had to have one. And we were getting kind of older for them. But I mean, look at me now. I get giddy if I still see one or an American What's girl the doll. appeal of dolls. these dolls? They smell nice. Oh, the Cabbage Patch dolls are amazing. I think it's because the head has. I just love to hold it. I just love to squeeze I would them. say it's because they kind of have onion shaped heads. My mother loves onions. So. <laughs> no. They no. smell amazing. Anyways, I wanted one really bad, and my mom and my sister decided to camp out at Jimco because they Where had Jimco to get. Jimco was a store you had to have a, a membership for, like Sam's Club. Yeah, it was Jimco and Zodi's. I think they may have done both stores. Those were, Zodi's was like the target of our day, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But they got them that Christmas, and according to the stories, which I would love my sister to be able to tell one day because she was literally there. Um, it was literally like pull, grab, punch to get them. But she got all three of our, our girls' ones. I was a little bummed because my niece has got the girl dolls. And I really wanted the one with the red hair and the pigtails. Because I am really, I was really girly little girl, princessy little girl. And I wanted one with dresses and ruffles. And I got the bald boy. Well, let, let's, <laughs> let's say it right. You were the youngest of ten. Yes. With the only one with a different father. Right, all so nine. your mother had nine kids with one guy. And this was many years later. The age yes. difference for me you're and my the, sister. You're the change of life, baby. So they already hate you. Yeah, you're getting that's pretty much You're true. getting your parents after they've struggled and strived, and now they have money and a little bit of security. And so they, Yeah, but they loved my new father. That's why I never understood why they resented me, because they absolutely adored my dad. Because no he treated he you different than anybody. Oh, I think it's because he threw money around to them and bought well, them all whatever they wanted, but that could be it too. You know, they come over and you're like, hey, I got a pony, and I got a cabbage yeah. patch kid, and all the stuff, you know my strawberry shortcake Real stuff pony. burnt, I but I got it all horse. back. I had a show horse that I rode for show. Like, I actually did... Half the audience already hates you already. And then I had a miniature pony, Minnie Mouse. It was just for cuteness. Uh Uh-huh. I used to have a miniature pony. You know, it was just for cuteness. No biggie. Just a, like, $3,000 pony. I didn't have a pony. pony. I had a Tauntaun. Yeah, I lived a different lifestyle as a child. Why can't I marry someone in the mall? I should rethink this, huh? Have you seen Goodfellas? (laughs) Have you seen those women? (laughs) Anyways, I got my cabbage patch in the story. I still have him today. Uh, We were watching a documentary on cabbage patch dolls just last night, and I ran and got him. And Jeff came back in the room and I was sitting there holding him. He's like, where did that come from? You just like... It just appeared. Yeah, I'm like, from my bedroom. Of course I have my dolly in my bedroom. I always have my doll out. So the year you got your shortcake and then it burnt and you got it back. Yep. And then the year you got your Cabbage Patch yep. Kid. Those are my best friends. Hey, honestly, I think dehydrated strawberries are pretty good in the microwave, so... What? Oh. 
Boy, that's you're so. What is he talking are you about? On drugs? <laughs> we said the word <laughs> strawberry while we're doing a podcast. Who are you playing? What are you playing? Baby? Yeah, I'm playing. Okay. The... All right, Austin, what's your favorite Christmas? Oh, let's talk about Christmas. 2003, go order. Shrek. Oh, well, we got to go in age hey, order? Oh, man. All right, I was supposed Sorry. to talk about getting my laptop. Set up. I don't know what to say. We went to Vegas that year, right? Was well, that one of your most memorable ones? So we decided to go to Vegas yeah. on Christmas Day, which is something our family normally didn't do, right? Christmas in Las Vegas. Yeah. Decorate the chips. How does it go? My memory is so That's bad. It's going to blend with 10 other Vegas trips. Explain, remind me I know what this happened. Trip. This is my favorite year ever. Like... This Christmas, that Christmas was life changing. That was a life changing, incredible okay, the Christmas. Okay, Christmas he's talking about was life changing to you. Yes, absolutely. Well, maybe we can do it together then. Okay. And Luna can just join in. Christmas 2013. Uh, 2013 was an interesting year. It was my first year as a teenager, and like me at the beginning of the year and me at the end of the year, the biggest change I've ever gone through as a person. At the beginning of the year, I was still collecting Star Wars figures. I was still buying new cars, toys. Like I was. All of my high school years are just a blur. <laughs> and by the end of 2013. I was a teen on a laptop, sipping my coffee, wearing my sweater vests. Like, I had really matured that year. But let's talk about what happened. Why did you get laptops? We decided not to do gifts that year. We decided that we wouldn't have a regular Christmas that year, and we would instead commit to one singular item. So I wanted a computer. To me, a po- my own personal computer seemed a million miles away. Like, actually having my own computer, I only dreamed of that. What I used to do is I used to use my Nintendo Wii and 3DS to go on the internet, and it would take was forever to Was it your first load. laptop, Luna? Yes. Yes, it was. It was, all, it was. We used to share the family computer before then. You guys don't understand. This is a time before phones. Like, in 2013, even, the only way we had of going on the internet was using our game consoles. I did phone. have a f- text-only flip phone that I used to check the PlayStation blog every day. That's something. It had the internet. I had a 3DS that loaded Facebook. Text notes, only. So. But so, like, getting that computer was life changing. It was opening a portal to a new social life, a opportunity, like, life changing. Literally life changing. I think it was life changing to yeah. you as well. Because it's all, it became my life. Yeah. So I found the hobbies I like, and pretty much everything I like to do now is at the computer. And even computers aside, that trip itself was extremely. All my memorable. friends I've ever met are from the computer. Whereas, normally on Christmas, we sit around and drink hot cocoa, and we just kind of wait. Christmas is a never-ending hype train of waiting. That Christmas, we were out running about at Vegas in freezing cold weather, and it was awesome. Me and Luna had an amazing idea that we were going to make a movie this Christmas. Was that the Kubo? Oh, that's we right, we did. A movie. So, Luna bought a digital camera, folks. No phones back then. A digital thick camera. And we filmed ourselves dancing around Las Vegas yep. dressed as Homestuck characters. Where's this video at? Oh, I've seen it. Just recently. I, you have a copy on your flash drive. I have a copy on my flash drive. And I have a copy on my computer. It's like 30 or... De- 40 little cut up 10 minute segments. Yeah. Well, someday we'll together. need to edit it together because we thought we were going to be like the hot thing on the internet. We were going to literally break through to cyberspace with this. Wow. Like, oh, yeah. We thought we were making something. We went to the M&M store and busted some moves. We went to the street in Las Vegas. It's hilarious because, I mean, I still had my hair and blonde back then. I had not hit puberty yet. It looks like I was freaking 10 years old. And. I did not know how to dance. I was trying to, like, suffle and move around. I remember. That it makes was, it funnier. It what was I remember amazing. was Christmas Eve, your mother and I went down to the Strip. We were staying at one of the suites, right? Uh, off off Strip. We were, we were in a two-room suite. It was really nice. I forgot the name of that place. Um, Something with a T? The, the, the Tuscan, Tuscany. Tuscany Suites. Yes. And we went down to um, uh, the Venetian... And you'll be shocked, it was mobbed. All these foreigners were there because they don't celebrate Christmas the way Americans do. So they were just out and about. And there were people there at like midnight, 1 a.m. with children running around on the strip, Christmas trees, people pissing in the streets. I just remember turning to your mom and going, we should probably get out of here. This is just a recipe for disaster. I, I didn't recognize that. To me, it was just Christmas Wonderland. And Wonderworld. Do you know what we did Christmas Eve? The greatest Christmas Eve ever. We saw the greatest show I have ever seen in my lifetime. Penn and Teller. Penn and Teller. Oh, that was live. that year, huh? Penn well, we and Teller that yeah. live. Oh my Let's god. See, like, I knew these things happened, but I couldn't tell you which Vegas trip they were. I do not 
usually get a lot out of meeting someone. I don't know why I don't get starstruck like you guys do. I don't chase after celebrities at conventions. If I bump into them... But these cool. are the desert bus because guys. You know nobody but yourself. I know, right? <laughs> but Penn and Tello on stage will like... There was a I glow coming around them. <laughs> they were amazing. They were funny and cynical, yet extremely kind-hearted. They stayed after the show in half an hour to sign everybody's autograph. They signed me an autograph. It was yeah. amazing. Didn't hurt that we had VIP seats, <laughs> thanks to AJ. Well, that's that's what made it, and I, I thank him for that because I will never forget that until I the day I die. Any of this. I, I can tell you the so. So, so you got like a Play-Doh something? As I don't know. You seem pretty excited to meet Pat the NES your, punk. Your little... He's cool. <laughs> I don't think he so. was awesome in person, though. Like yeah. sometimes you it meet. It was Play-Doh day. That was my advent calendar. Sometimes you meet a hero, a and pla- even though most of your heroes are disappointments, the very just regular people. Sometimes you'll meet someone that will exceed your expectations, just because they're such a nice guy. Like they're all good people in this world, and that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, that was Luna's story. Yeah. Now we're gonna move on to Austin again. Well, I could just talk I'll about I'll steal most of his. Just rewind yeah, and play it again. Some of the other notable years, um, 2010, uh, I'd, I'd been starting to leave Star Wars because you couldn't find the figures. There were a whole bunch I wanted that year but couldn't get. So I got the Outer Spacemen, which were these, like, specialty auto figures that had this elusivity around them that were really cool. You had the Christmas set. Yes. Uh, 2009, uh, Star Wars figures were $4. Guys, in 2009, Star Wars figures were $4. It was so great. I got, like, literally 25 figures, and I just stacked them all up and kept counting them. <laughs> and then it was painful because Mom told me, you open one figure an hour. Okay, that's my rule. <laughs> oh, here we go. It's not like that's new when I just, uh, okay, this year because you got so much. I always have, you know, every family has little rules and ways of doing oh things. God. And, on Christmas Day, I've always hated watching videos of children that tear into every toy in the first 20 minutes. Pieces are all over the house. They never yeah, play with it again yeah, because I it's all like destroyed. The second that they open it, they oh they they open they unwrap it, they open it. But I don't understand the whole. You have because to you say appreciate one each hour. toy. If you if you take that toy and I tell you to go away for an hour, you can't open nothing else for another hour. You go play the toy you just yeah, opened. It's like, yes, it's counterpoint. Like, like, when but you're if done, like where it goes? If you get multiple, counterpoint. Like, like Little's Pet Shops, and you only get one new Little's Pet Shop an hour? Yeah, you eventually get to your playland. Counterpoint. I uh, That leads to me never opening some stuff. Well, Lula I still was have always famous for not like, opening stuff. Like, t-shirts from two years ago in my closet. This all the tags on them. Yeah, but you're, you're, you're <laughs> at this weird point in your life where you're like... Preparing for the next chapter. Hey, speaking of that, right, right, did right. I buy you some onesie fuzzy girl pajamas that are like full on a onesie? They're I think I have those. Yes, yeah, they're either in my closet with my robe. I, I haven't have gotten never that down seen yet. Where those pajamas? Over there on my hope chest. Ever. I just want. I mean, to that's a general problem with Christmas is you get you like... give winter themed clothing that lasts like a week. But you never but wore them. We're in California. Okay. <laughs> I will find them. I but sure I have them. This either. made the entire Christmas because suddenly <laughs> Christmas lasted about six days, and yes, every hour like it, it was should. like for grateful children that respect the toys they're given. I do, yeah. I do. Oh my god! Yes. And it was like, okay, the next figure is this guy going to be integral to the storyline, or do I? I want I'm to changing. I lined it up and told you what order you're getting, and wouldn't let you could open the biggest best present first. I don't care, but it's one thing at a time. So you treat yes. that toy with respect. It gets put away properly. And you enjoy it for an hour. I am changing my favorite gift new. from laptop to Tommy Wiseau underwear. I did that. <laughs> I did that. You have underwear for Christmas. I remember we went to, was it WonderCon? Was it the frog guy? It, no, just it pick was, one. Was He's in all of them. Yes. And I just saw him at the last one we went to. We saw, I you. saw him. I took and a I picture said, of him. You two, the day before, stopped at his booth. You're making a big deal about this suit. I don't know who the heck he is. I never heard of him. I've never seen a person have so much merchandise guy. of themselves. He has like, you could buy him on anything. And cheap. He gives it's, the shit away. Hey, honestly, it's worse than me. <laughs> but I was and like. my merchandise. So the next day when your dad went back, I said, I don't know who this guy is. But yeah. Luna made a very big deal about this guy. And what so, was the funniest part of buying that? Do you remember? The funniest part? He made you take a picture with him. Oh, yeah. I took a picture with him. <laughs> he wasn't going to say no. He's very Austin-ish. 
The way Austin <laughs> loves himself. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's Austin, saying I'm... the disaster artist. The I disaster think Austin. selling your stuff and being that way. Uh, Did you see him grab Jay on our Red Letter Media? He was a very no. nice man. You seen that footage? No. There's footage of them meeting Tommy in like 2002, and he grabs Jay in a chokehold. <laughs> and Jay says, uh, you're molesting me. And Tommy's like, oh, yeah, I grabbed you. you. Let's take picture. If you <laughs> at his booth. He is so friendly and takes Yeah, he's, and, he's very social. And I thought, well, <laughs> I, you probably have never even worn them because the autograph, but They're I thought, autographed. I wouldn't wear them. They're collector's I thought, item. Oh, Lou, it's, I need underwear. It's on the list. <laughs> <laughs> the things he needs. So I thought I was getting two things done at once. So I bought the underwear for you to wear. <laughs> and I wondered if you ever wore them. But I guess... No, they're autographed. Them. Josie, what was your favorite Christmas? <laughs> the year that I got the Welly Wisher. That was oh. last year, right? Yeah. Yep. It was the pickle on the tree. The pickle. Tell the story. Do I tell the story? Sure. Oh, well, you haven't been on the show at all. You opened up all your Christmas presents, and what did you want that year that you didn't get? An American Girl doll. Here. Were you disappointed? Talk to the mic as oh. if it's your mother. Hello there, wonderful Mike. You look nice today. Would you like to go out? Hi, I'm Mike. Have you seen Eleven? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, sorry, okay. no. So, I wanted an American Girl doll. We opened all the presents under the tree. And I got another doll, but it was an American Girl. You got one of those Disney Disney dolls, Disney which are adorable. They're great. Right. But, you know, it's like the second best. So. Right. And then I remembered the pickle. Dun, dun, dun. So the pickle is, da- it's like an ornament that Dad hides around the house. And whoever finds it first gets a present. But has anyone ever found it or got a present but you? I found it both years. Yeah. You always find it. Imagine if... Austin had found it, and he had a welly wisher now. Oh, that I, I'd dress it up, I'd bless its tail, I'd do it. <laughs> I would have been okay with that. <laughs> and then I'd, I'd hold my Christmas pickle proudly. <laughs> Please don't hold your Christmas pickle. So listen, so that was the greatest one ever. Yeah. Okay, and but you're, you're kind of out of the doll thing already. I'm not out of it, it's just he not... Nobody like... wants to say that. She is not out of it. We love America. Prove me wrong, Girl. Silent Bob. But she's doing what I did with Cabbage Patch dolls. One day, it was all about my music, my 80s style, looking cool with my friends and wanting to be a teenager. And then the next day, it was like, I just want to play with my cabbage patch doll. Like, it's okay to be that age. You struggle with that age for a couple of years. I do it from 10 to 14 with that age. I had it too. I was playing with Star Wars. Yeah, it's okay. I, don't, I never grew out of it. I listened to the Smiths, and I have my Luke Skywalker doll. What's well, the problem? See? She's not out of it. Leave her alone. We're looking for Leah Clark. Impossible doll out there. If anyone has her, yes. I'll buy it. This Contact is, me. This is she was the last you, year's girl of the year. And you had her in your arms. In my hand, Doc. I, I got it in my hand. Have the Burn money it. That day. You don't think it didn't kill me as a mother? You don't think I relived that night? I'm like, my God, I would have sold, hooked on a corner to get that doll now if I okay. could go back and talk. What's the worst <laughs> gift you've ever been given for Christmas? Oh. The worst? Yeah. Oh, I know what your dad's going to say. Is I it the Star I Wars pencil case? Oh, my gift. No, no. I, that's oh, a great like story, that. though. Funny story, though. <laughs> What's the, what do you think I'm going to say? I gave you a gift once, and you wouldn't stop talking about how lame it was or something. Oh, which one was that? Was it Huey Lewis album? Or well, that was for Lewis? Valentine's Day. Oh. I think for Valentine's Day, your mom gave me a Huey Lewis concert but you DVD. you liked him. I thought you'd be <laughs> but so excited. Are you going to sit and watch it with me? What am I going to watch? Do you want to know one of my most memorable Valentine's Day? What's that? Was I got a book. All about Survivor, because Survivor was still really new. <laughs> and you could study the people. Yes, and, I remember and that. Survivor was getting ready to start that next week. And it was like the but best. How'd you jump to Valentine's ever. Day? You gotta go to Christmas. Okay, sorry. We're, we're supposed to be talking about bad gifts. The not worst gifts. Christmas the worst. gift. Let me think for a minute here. here. I'll tell you, it, to me, there have been some crappy gifts. I, you I almost, watch what you said. I almost buddy. divorced you when you bought me Crash for Christmas Eve, that stupid movie. That one best picture. It's one of the worst movies ever. I don't know and movies. We I bought it because it was like two dollars, and I just remember going, "You think I want to watch this?" Hey, first of We've all, we've been married for years. I don't know movies. You watch all movies. It was part of the Black Friday Honey, sale. If it has Brendan Fraser all, in it and Sandra Bullock, I'm not going to watch second it. Second of all, the Christmas Eve gift is supposed to be something little, something crappy, oh, not was, anything good. Oh, it's something crappy. All the good stuff you say for Christmas. <laughs> Day. Wow, well, you, hey, you win in Think that respect. Think about this way. You buy me, like, I got one of those things that you shave your eyebrows in the middle. You what wanted that, that. Yeah, for Christmas Eve present. Like, we get Christmas Eve I wanted you to shave your... your eyebrows for Santa. Think about this way. <laughs> Santa, you No, know, listen, listen. This is what not one of the worst gifts, but it was very uncomfortable. <laughs> and it was the first Christmas I had with your mom at the beach house. She had bought me all these gifts, 
And I don't even remember what they were. I'm sure they were action figures and stuff. Yeah, and I'm sure they were really good. nice. But my mother, my mother bought me this plastic drum that unfurled and was full of X-Acto knives. Oh, there was God. like 50 X-Acto knives. Oh, my knives. God. And, wait, wait. It no, was, I remember it, this Christmas. It was the coolest thing ever. Wait a minute. And your mother got so mad. Because it was the coolest gift ever, and that should have been from your girlfriend. <laughs> see, see? And I remember going... It was like those things you get on ass seen on TV. It was like... Dad it was triangular, oh. and it like rolled out to have like every tool, a no, crafter... No, it was all X-Acto knives. It was, it was all was, knives all the way down. It was a crafter's dream or a serial killer. <laughs> I just remember Wanted going, I went on and on, and I just remember your mother, because Steve I was coming out of her gifts, ears. Like Star Wars, vintage, expensive stuff that you were like, I, if I never had this as a child, and if I could have had the Darth Vader speaker phone, I would have been complete. But this was a drum that opened that up. That passing on TV 1999 tool. No, it was the Whatever. coolest thing ever. Whatever. And I the more, that Christmas. The more I thanked my mother, the angrier you got. Uh, was that the funniest Whatever. thing ever? You bought me a dress that was like super slutty and I had to wear it in front of your whole family that day. It was the dress from Indecent, Indecent proposal. proposal. And what was it in? Well, I love the box. The was, box, which is sitting right there. Yeah. yeah was, oh, yeah. Uh, I don't even have that things exacto things. knife set. Good. <laughs> don't have the Darth Vader speakerphone either. Yeah, I sold it to pay a light bill one time. That's wow. what I do. Wow, this is quite the... You it's could, funny, right? Welcome to adulthood. Remember those toys that burned up Josie that my mom rebought me? I also sold because we needed money. But your dad and we got together, rebought every strawberry shortcake thing I ever had as a child. Because that was really important to me. And then you all came along and I sold it. Yeah. Because we needed the money. Yeah, but kids got to eat. Life. We're the best action figures you could have last Kids got to eat. Do you guys smell like strawberry? Can I scratch Austin and smell? Yeah, he, does, he, does. he does. Austin, Austin does. does. Was there a strawberry shortcake that smelled like Wendy's fries? Because Austin does smell <laughs> no, like that sometimes. No, he like Wendy's chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets. What does that mean? My I entire see, room corner Josie's too, consists right? Can Josie can vouch what? for this. He Purchases does. from Savers. No matter how Savers. much he has a smell that smells like Wendy's chicken nuggets. Looking back on Christmas, I can pinpoint every year to like what I was about that year. Like 2003 was the swag year. Everything I got was swag. 2004. You chose that. Oh, 2004. You wanted that more than anything. Is that worst gift? That car year? No, 2004. Santa killed it with Spider Man. This oh, was yeah, this that was the Spider Man table, Octo. right? What is that guy? <laughs> he, was in a, he, he was wanted in to such, be Doctor Octopus. He wanted to be Doctor Octopus. He had Doc a bathrobe with all these arms. And, we have pictures of you with uh, goggles on, like all serious. <laughs> he what you don't? He was Doc Ock. Here, let me let me give you, you let me give you guys some Christmas insight. There was three years where your mother and I were flat broke. We had no money for Christmas. We were ba- barely keeping the lights miracles. on and food it on the table. It was before Josie. It was just the boys. Right? No, because it went all she the way the last it went all the way to Lock Haven big, yeah. the last year. And we knew a guy named Mel. And Mel was a sculptor. He made toys. He made Marshall Bravestar. He worked at Knott's as a sculptor. A Remember the man. Snoopy on top of the car? He sculpted that. Mel was juiced in with Toys for Tots. Yeah. So he called us over that first Christmas and we went there, and the whole warehouse was full of toys. Full of toys. And he told your mom, he had a thing for your mom, which he was loved great. Me. He said, he such a How great many kids guy. you got? Take a trash bag for each kid and fill, fill it. it. Anything you Anything want. Anything you want. Wow. And that's how you guys you had. You guys had the most amazing Christmas for three years in a row, and the most poorest years we had. Yeah. You would never Remember that Naboo laser tag Christmas. set? That was like a like, hundred bucks. Yeah. Big stuff. Yeah. All came from Mel. So I just, wow. you guys never Where met Mel. Know? Listen no. to this. Wait, let me finish the Not story. So you guys never met Mel. Mel lived in a warehouse in uh, Orange and he sculpted toys and he It was a cool warehouse. It was pretty cool, right? He lived there in a little room above it. And the last time we were there, he was not doing well. And we asked him because at one point he couldn't get up the stairs. So I remember the last thing I said to him was, do you need me to go upstairs? Do you need anything? He's like, no, my, my kids come over. It's cool. And about three weeks or four weeks after that, we um, were, we, were in the, we were getting ready to go see him. We were going to get a pizza, and we were going to go to, and you were going to finally meet Mel and get some yeah. pictures. And I called. Because you were old enough, I didn't understand. I wanted them to understand yeah, where Christmas who Santa was. was. Yeah, because they, they now knew. Yeah. So they needed to know so, mom and dad shouldn't get credit for those years. When I called, somebody else answered. And they said, no, Mel passed away yesterday. So we Just missed Mel stuff. by like two days. Oh. Yeah, a really good guy. Yeah. Uh, he invented this thing where 
he would go around to celebrities and he would cast their hands. They'd put their hands in a, in a bucket of alginate and then cast them and then sell them for charity. So I have pictures somewhere of Mel with Mark Hamill. Not just uh, not just Mike Myers, but he's with Austin Powers doing his hands. Yeah. He's in full costume. So here's to Mel, everybody. Yes, Mel. Yeah. Good memory. Good guy. Good guy. One of the nicest men I've ever known. And I know we weren't the only one he was sneaking over to. Oh, yeah, no. He to, helped to, a lot of people. Many a families had Christmases. But here's the thing. We walked, I mean, we waddled out of there like Laverne and Shirley at no, the I always uh, felt so guilty. supermarket. I'm like, well, I'll just take one or two. And you'd be like, but, no. But you, you look back up. and there was no, there, no dent. You didn't even look like we'd been there. No, the Not trucks just kept coming. Yeah. Yeah, no, was Mel was great. a good guy. And he guy. called us every year. We never had to reach out to him. When are you coming over to get your Christmas toys yeah. for the kids? And I'm like, oh my God. He and those were me. moments where you got, all three of you kids were still into toys. Yeah. And so this was an unbelievable boost to the family. Yeah. Unbelievable. We have those pictures, and they're amazing from those years. Yeah. And then you guys grow up, and now you want laptops to look at naked ladies. Yeah, and there's no there's no mail to help us out no more. <laughs> Unfortunately, those were good times. Yeah, but they were good Christmases. Yeah. I've mainly focused on big items now. I wanted the laptop, then I wanted the Wii U, and now the Switch. So. Yes, my uh, boss at work told me his son wants a Switch for Christmas. He's five. <laughs> I said there. I said, "Do you know how expensive they are?" He goes, "He won't be getting one." Yeah, I wouldn't give it to. Someone. I said, "Well, mine's seventeen. They don't even make games for a five-year-old. He knows uh, the yeah. appreciation of what they're getting. But see, what was his kid, like it. like you guys when you were younger, he watches all the commercials. Mm -hmm. So he wants. I just have to say, bless Walmart for having layaway. Yeah. <laughs> he wants to be a YouTuber. Do you want to be a YouTuber, Josie? No. I thought you one time I you mean, did. Go see LPS. We, we, we make plushy videos. Yes. Yeah, they do. But it's more videos. of like a fun thing for like close people to watch. If there's like random weirdos across the internet I don't even know watching my videos, it's kind of creepy. Yeah, pretty much. So what are you hoping for Christmas this year? Rachel, go first. Uh, lots of LuLaRue leggings. LuLaRue. Oh, thank God. LuLaRue leggings. Yes. Thank God. It's weird because I'm actually hoping for the same thing. Yeah. Other than that, doesn't really matter. That's all I want. Josie? Um, I want a desk and like... Pins. Oh, she doesn't want much. A giant piece of furniture. We never say no to dolls. If a you can pop out a surprise and doll. Pins. And depends? Pins. Oh, I was like, art what do you want stuff. depends for? She wants art stuff. Austin? Yeah. I really want a, uh, a, uh, so a Sony PlayStation or an Xbox. So I, <laughs> I want a Red Ryder BB gun with a... <laughs> no, I want a Nintendo Switch. The new console, because there's a Splatoon game on it, and there's a Sonic game on it. And as fans of both, I'm obligated to play them. Luna? A pair of leggings does sound nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, cool. I only have one pair I use for work. I just wear it like three times, and then wash it, and then wear it three times. Am I supposed to buy you it? leggings now, too? I need, like, need one pair black of plain black leggings. Those are uh, not Lula Rock, no. <laughs> Those are know. unicorns. Either. Those are very rare to get. I love that the LuLaRoe people have co-opted the word unicorn. Yeah. What does that mean? Unicorn means it's a rare. Elusive rare and rare. rare. That's used in rare every collection. In the swingers world, it yeah, means I something mean, completely different. I, you know, the, in, ami in Amiibo collecting, unicorn is also a really common talk. By the way, could you have made it easier for people to find my YouTube video, please? Yeah, I thought it would be, I put in on the search engine today, LuLaRoe, leggings, Did Rachel. Did you not search optimize your video with proper tagging? And then... I kept putting in stuff. So finally, me and Carrie thought, oh, we'll go on your Facebook and see how we listed it. It's the LuLaRoe leggings, check it out, unicorn rare or something. That's what That's I would have to put in. That's what all the big videos have. Yeah. And but that is not my friend. All the me. keywords are on there. You put in LuLaRoe, Silent Bob Stash, comes right up. Oh, I didn't know you could put your name in the search. Oh, my God. Name. Yeah. Oh, my God. Everybody in the office wanted to watch my video today, so I finally found it for them. Did they watch it? You, I don't wait, wait, know. let me see if I get this straight. You think my goal is to make the video difficult to find? <laughs> well, for my friends, I, that what we're looking no for sense. Some keywords that would be about me. Just say <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. We're not, I forgot to put in ugly, lazy, these and disrespectful. Not, these are not computer-friendly YouTube people, so we had trouble. Well, all of us. You had trouble because 
Every house frau makes a YouTube video where they're showing their leggings off. Yeah, you think they're yeah, going to get ten thousand hits. First, we scroll through like ten pages just looking for my picture to come up, the icon. Oh of my me. god! The thumbnail. YouTube is dead. That's when Carrie had the brilliant yeah. idea to go on Facebook and see how you titled it. Now you want to watch Mom, Spider Man Elsa? Those are the real keywords. Yes, Mom, yeah. that's the real keywords you need really for all those hits. Internet lingo. Like when something won't load, she goes, "This page is not building." And when she goes to zoom in on something, I need to build it or build it up. Blow it up, blow it up. I need to blow up this photo. <laughs> That's what you're doing. No, you're zooming You know you're old in. when your children are railing yeah. against you for technology. And you, you take a picture with tons of people and you're like, look at our ussy. Nobody when I, says when that. I was a, When I was your I age, do. Josie, when I was your age, we got our first Betamax a VCR. What? what is that? It plays tapes. What's a tape? And my like mother... A piece of tape? Yeah, my mother would yell, <laughs> Jeffrey, get in here and make this damn thing work. And I was 12, and I came out and I go, Mother, hold on. You put the tape in here, you put the TV on here. There, there's your movie. She goes, I don't understand anything how it works. I can't take so, this dumb TV and cable to turn off and on. She can't hit the too. power button. Your mother cannot Try turn. Drive me crazy. It, the remote doesn't work. If you she turns one, button, one off, and the other one off. comes on. Yes, and I stand there for 20 minutes going back and forth. And then somehow I'll get lucky, and all of a sudden they'll both shut off. Or I give up and I just leave the little light on. For the Christmas, box. mom wants a universal remote. Yes, one of those one big jumbo ones. This is turning all off. Big novelty I ones. I don't understand why I'm supposed to be doing multiple of. <coughs> Crazy you know when you ever. look under the Christmas tree and you get those boxes that look like they're kind of like shoe boxes, but they're a lot thinner, and then you open it up and it's those paper like white boxes. As a kid, those the are the biggest off. disappointment. That's the that's disappointment because you open clothing. it up and it's a T-shirt or yeah. socks. But now you want clothes. Now I want. That's yeah. What you asked for. But like, or you're gonna be really disappointed this year. Like sweaters and stuff, but like you open it and sometimes you get like the weirdest things. Like, oh look, it's socks with unicorns on them. They smell nice, Josie. I'll tell you what, God, you guys you know. as kids are missed out on, and that's <laughs> there was a phenomenon for us. For me, it was about 1978 through 1983 or 84, and that's the Sears Wish Book. The what? It would come in the mail I was around. Just talking to Carl and Jeffrey about it last night. It would come in the mail around. Early November, it was a 500, 600 page catalog with tons of stuff. But when you got to the back for the toys, they were all presented in these dynamic pictures of the toys in action. Austin looked them Spacious. up. You can still buy them. Oh, good luck. No, they're like 15 bucks or no, something. No, they're 40, Mom. They're 30 dollars. I want they're one very of those. expensive. Although I would just want to buy everything in it. And we would take sad. it and we would circle. Yeah. Circle, too. circle, circle. Just like I still do with the IKEA catalog now. Yeah. Yeah. Every time it comes, chair. I run to get my black sharpie and I sit down for like an hour. I'm like, leave mama alone. The Ikea catalog came today. And then we never go back and get one dang thing I circled, but gosh, it's fun to dream. The uh, other thing growing up in the 70s and the early 80s was nobody went anywhere for Christmas because there was nowhere to go. No, the world shut Nothing down. Nothing was open. Not a store, not a, not a gas not station, a food, nothing. Nothing. You go out in the streets and you could you could throw a rock yeah, and weird. not see anybody. Like it's so weird that slowly places are, are oh, open yeah, now. A lot it's totally different now. now. When we were kids, made. though, yep. the, the kids own the streets. Yeah, it was weird. Now we can't go outside. Would you guys like some Christmas poetry? Oh, I have written Austin up. Austin did this. And he we'll end the shit. show on that. So okay. stay tuned for Austin's. Christmas show ending poetry. poetry. It's going to be awesome. Did you write this while we were talking right now? Or what is this? Oh, when we lived at the beach house, uh, see the two previous episodes, uh, my mother had a Christmas tree in the living room, in her bedroom, in the antique store, and your mom and I had one in our room, a little tiny one in our room. And, you know, the gifts everywhere. Those were weird Christmases with all those people over. Yeah. Like yeah. Christmas would be kind of like fuzzy. 40 or 50 rotating so people. And then big tables of food. But it was but, fun. But nowhere to go. Nope. One Christmas must have been 1989. 88 or 89. I spent Christmas at Disneyland. I had a pass. And I went to Disneyland. I went with David Lewis. That was before me. But didn't we do Christmas once? I think, I think we did. I think we did I, I bought a Swatch watch that was Coca-Cola brand. That's I cool. Love Swatch watches. I love oh, Swatches. I bought it at Disneyland. I know, me too. That was my divorce present to myself. Oh, when I divorced my first I had that husband. little band. I had that little band that went on top. Remember the, the the protector? I always wanted one, so I figured we were divorcing anyways, and I probably was gonna go bankrupt. So I went out and ran up all my credit cards. Nice. I got new clothes. I got my Swatch watch. Do you remember the little band on top? Yes. The Swatch protector. Yes. 
The first one was just a straight line across. I still every time I go to Vegas, circle. drill up the swatches because they have a nice swatch. Swatch store. shop is at yeah. New York, New York. That was the first and only one I ever bought of those. It's actually at Caesar's Palace. Is it too late to put request in for Christmas? It's really too big out. Yes. Oh, they do. Yeah. What, what do you want for Christmas? I, I don't. There's no time for shopping. I want a cabbage patch doll. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> I'll get you a cabbage well, patch doll with a swat on. How about well, that? Well, we are going on a family trip tomorrow. Yes, I'm so excited. So we we're there. We're go- as you're listening to this episode, we are in Riverside. Yes. At the swap meet. So maybe we'll we find you a Cabbage going Patch. Going back to our old I've seen ground. Cabbage Patch kids in the box from the 80s I at know, the swap but meet. But now that I want one, it won't happen. No, I got to work till 2 a.m. Plus it's Christmas time, so they're going to jack up the prices more than normal. For those who go to swap meets, I have been on the hunt for Sonic the Hedgehog comics. That's what I've been looking for. In That's, what, for That's what I've been looking for, yes. We're also going to go to the Gallery of Tyler so I can see my friends at Build a Bear. And what else are we doing? Savers. Toys R Us. Savers. Oh my god, we have to go to Toys R Us. I got an email today. They have not just select locations, but they're guaranteeing that they have Truly Me's and product of American you Girl. You don't need any of that. We just I spent just go 50 at bucks it. at the store on Black Friday. That was hardly anything. Oh my god. I don't know what you guys bought. I just got a jacket for the doll. Well, maybe Santa bought something. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I wow. think yeah, the, email, well, the American Gold people were very frightened when an old bearded man came in buying doll clothing. I need this. Um, okay, so please just take it all and go. What is he talking about? Santa Claus. Oh. Oh, that Girl took so long. I was like, like, Grandpa Dad, too. Mom. <laughs> Dad, we had Josie with them. It didn't look that weird. It looked like a sweet grandpa buying his daughter. No, I'm talking about freaking Santa Claus. Santa Claus is scary, man. Grandpa Dad reminds me of Santa Claus. Not in the way that he's watching us. He reminds but me of the the <laughs> old guy <laughs> on the bridge with the half beard. Like Fasu, store, stasu, store, welcome Christmas. I love that cartoon. Okay, so... Cartoon? We're going to continue cartoon. doing episodes. Movie. We're going to... Oh, con- God, no. <laughs> Baby Grinch. That. Baby yeah, Grinch. Okay. A moment. We're going to continue doing episodes through Christmas. Uh, there may be a repeat in there, depending on how my schedule gets. But the repeat will be a good one. It's going to be George Lucas's A Sithmas Carol. One of, parts, <laughs> one of the best. Parts one, two, and three. Oh, wow. If you didn't hear that, that's the tale of Jeff and Ezer Scrooge who has lost his taste for Star Wars and has taken on a trip through three ghosts to Star Wars past, Star Wars present, and Star Wars future. It's one of my favorite series of episodes I've ever done. I made Austin listen to him. It was awesome, though. Like, th- these are really good guys. Listen to these. Yeah, it's, it's relevant the, again this year. It's, re- it's yeah. like every Christmas, it's most, forever. It has the most production value of any episode <laughs> I've ever done. We're going to have a done. podcast for Star Wars coming up, right? And coming up, don't Although forget... I don't want to have it in my house if anybody wants to offer. Next week... I'm not we will prepared. stay tuned to our Facebook page. We are going to have the Star Wars: The Last Jedi annual roundtable <laughs> episode. We have to find a place to have it. Is the only problem because so, it's all decorated for Christmas. There's just no room in here, and I don't want to make a mess right before Christmas. And I love y'all, but yeah, we'll, I'd really we'll find go a to place. A restaurant or somewhere else, and a not restaurant have everybody has too here. Much loud noise. Not my problem. We'll find a place. So listen for that. On behalf of the Holden Tucker family, we want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I am the voice. I am joined what? by... Just, He's going to get to you. God almighty. Just, I'm a professional <laughs> host. Okay. Uh, Give it a... <laughs> God. You're up, you're up, you're up, you're up, you're up. On behalf of the Holden Tucker family, Merry Christmas. I am the voice. I am Jeff Tucker. I am joined by... Rachel. Jose. Austin. Luna. Uh, together we are the Tucker family. We'd like to wish you a Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. And please, as our gift to you, please welcome Austin Tucker with a reading of his original Christmas poem. Poem number one, Goldfish at Denny's. Number one. No, Goldfish two. Goldfish at Denny's. Listen, you got to let him get through this. <laughs> Sorry, everyone go. Denny's. Shh, shh, shh. Goldfish at Denny's, spread in porcelain bowl, small fell, fell crackers. Set to await a steak. Appetizer solved to meet my hunger goal. <laughs> now this is what I call a date. Goldfish at Denny's, how you are the highlight. A true dark room's nightlight. Every day I be sore to wake at morning. As this is the meal I cannot resist. I cannot fight. 
And with my crackers, there was only sunshine. No crying, no mourning. Gold visit Denny's, fancy full meals aside. All I need is the sweet allure of your cheesy sweet scent. Winking fist silhouette, smooth surface. Quancy crisp texture, chewy bites, so good I cried. Making fine dining waiting convenient. Goldfish at Denny's, the steak arrives, steam oozing from its soft, puffy, bloody surface. A taste to be so bold and juicy. But I surprisingly sat down my forks, laid down my knives. Because I, when I have my Denny's goldfish, all is already fulfilled. Yes, oh. that is my favorite thing <laughs> that ever. Is awesome. I love it so much. You make me want to go to Denny's and I order know. goldfish. I know. And Nobody my, has goldfish like Denny's. My second poem. Oh, second poem. <laughs> another Christmas poem. <laughs> goldfish at Denny's. <laughs> my napkin in my lap. <laughs> Goldfish at Denny's. I can't believe I eat this crap. I'm enjoying this. My talented son is trying to For those to of you that are fans God. of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, do not listen to Austin's poetry. It's comparable to Bo Lapp's poetry. I'm crazy. I'm going to get serious, everybody. Oh, yeah. Everybody for the second one. Back, back oh, up, man. be quiet. I have to write this in no the rules silly. of poetry, so it's a nightmare. Like, this is actually structural. Is this improper proper iambic pentameter? Yes, yes it is. It really is. <laughs> Yes. The second amazing. one, however, uh, is one of the only assignments I've gotten at F1. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you sharing this? I got when was this? Uh, only a few weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, I, I did not get a good grade on Why this not? one. Why not? Because it, I don't bring you down to a B. No, 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 no. I'm already past it. I made up for it. Trust oh, me. okay. Here we go. This poem I say to you, <laughs> what the I wrote, is wrong with it, it is a sorted tale. I don't know. My what teacher is hated it. What is the it? grade I got was fail. The subject is my year, and I think it's a masterpiece. It's written in the style that of... That teacher's probably stupid. She don't know you. Go ahead. She loves me. It's oh. written in the style of Chaucer, the 1500s writer. What? <laughs> it's okay. an homage to please. medieval writings. Here we go. Oh, medieval writings. Okay, an baby, unorthodox student attended his class. Skilled he was in many art and crafts. Wait, your dad is laughing. That never happened. Keep it together, Jeff. Keep it together. It's the worst, it's the worst poem I've ever heard. I've only heard three words of it. I want to hear it. Everybody calm down or leave the room. Have you heard Emily, oh, Emily, Emily Dickinson's poem about trees? <laughs> Awesome. I don't think we'll ever see no, a me, poem me, as you. lovely as a tree. She just hung I, herself from that tree. I, I, I okay. want to hear it. Okay. I can't believe it. I need a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Is this part of the poem? I'm actually going to die right now. Okay. Give me a moment. Okay, continue. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're I want to hear about the unorthodox to... student. Tell oh, us, my God. <laughs> tell us about Chaucer again. He needs air. He just on. took his shirt off. He needs air. Oh, your shirt back on. It's hyperventilating. Go get the The worst part is when he goes, he goes, and now for my second poem. <laughs> and you're like, oh, like, I can't breathe. I, can't breathe. <laughs> I thought it was a medieval part. It's like, what? He said oh, some medieval like, thing. I know, okay. I know. Okay. Like an Adam Sandler movie. You're like, there's a sequel? Oh, no. We have to get through this. This Everybody, is the Pixels 2 <laughs> equivalent. He comes back in the room, take a deep breath. Hey, did you hear Ernest Klein announce he's writing a sequel to Ready Player One? Hey, Ready Player Two? Yeah, how do you do that? <laughs> well, he's coming back. Oh, Chaucer is coming is back. My, my chest feels heavy. Sorry for the How's sudden... How's your chest, Chaucer? The sudden strip scene I gave all of you. I needed it. I almost oh, no, died. No, you were in that little furry costume. You got overheated. <laughs> yeah. As a okay. Can you continue? I'm really okay, I lost, interested. I lost my voice a bit, but we're going to continue. Yeah, <laughs> I want to hear this. And no one's going to laugh. An, oh, an no. orthodox student. Oh, no, 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 no. Just it's, ignore I want you to laugh. That's oh, part of the okay, enjoyment. Okay, but you can't laugh. Is this Let bad on purpose? It. Yes, it's horrible. Okay. Yet he could play keyboard, but alas. No, you gotta start over. You gotta start over. You can't start in the okay. middle of this crap. <laughs> this is about Austin? Here we go. Yeah, yeah apparently. An unorthodox student attended his class. Skilled he was in many art and craft. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, let's go. Serious. Okay. He can't even read it. Because <laughs> everybody got him all crazy. Okay. He can't even read okay, it. Okay. Here we go. You need to calm down. You don't say anything. This, no, this is fantastic. Okay. Yet he could play keyboard, but alas, no bass. And worked hard of each subject. <laughs> 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 
Keyboard, the last no bass. <laughs> it's called bass. It doesn't even make sense. <laughs> he can catch fish, the last no bass. <laughs> he liked most of them sink, but alas, no Lance Bass. Like, that's the worst. That's what I thought he was talking about. He's talking about a bass. He's pronouncing it wrong to make it rhyme. It's the worst. Austin, get in here. I'm missing Vinny. I actually can't do this. Is there a level below failure? (laughs) He got an E on this. this. It's too good. I can't do it. You want me to read it? Yes. Oh, no. You should read it first. But you you won't know how to mispronounce it. Right. You should look at how long (laughs) this is. Dad, you won't know how to mispronounce the words to make it rhyme. Let me give you a shot here. Okay. All right. Okay. Everybody calm down. My life. Chaucer style. An unorthodox student attended his class. Skilled he was in many art and craft. Yet he could play keyboard, but alas, no bass. And worked hard of each subject. Oh, how he did, just to squeeze in another minute of art, as it was his passion with all of his heart. Curriculum filled many of the hour. However, time could lend itself to video entertainment, for he wished Mario could join him in engagement. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, where did this go? (laughs) Come on now. Soon, soon he could see the impending comic book convention. But for now, he focused all on educational tension. A nerd behind comics and a geek Behind textbooks was he, and when swept with a forceful wave of hungry, fanciful, dignified <laughs> chicken strips it would be. This is really sad. This is really sad. This is really sad. This is really sad. Yes. Many times of the earth cycle did he await, like when the bats and ghouls and costumes accompanied the full moon, or when Dolly Jolly savings and deals filled the shopping cart, come Dasher, come Dancer, come Prancer and Vixen, and all the rest of the leftover background reindeer, for my beloved education at this time of year weeps a tear. Fill the stockings presents and make sure the tree's loaded with Nintendo gear. For when history, math, English, and science sleep, Come Red Dawn Plumbers, Blue Hedgehogs, and Virtual Squid Fighters. <laughs> For all my interests are all the brighter. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Oh, that should have been an A+. Plus. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Beverly Goldberg. Everyone on this podcast is dumber for having heard that. (laughs) That was amazing. He worked hard on that, and you can tell. You're going to win an award someday. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, wait, wait. You're giving him points for sitting and talking about how great he is? (laughs) Yes. Oh, my God. Edgar Allan who? Edgar Allan who? Edgar Allan who? Edgar Allan who? Austin's gonna be the well, best. At least she said a poem, person, right? So, what would you guys say is the golden line of that poem? I think oh, the one we talked about the chicken strips. About the chicken strips and the Nintendo under the Mario's tree. Mario's there. And Mario, that was really you good part of it. You want to engage to Mario? Yeah. No, I, I think oh, that was oh all God. brilliant. All of so, it. why do you think this is my only school assignment to ever get an F on? I, because that teacher needs me to come up there. That's why. She doesn't understand art, Fanciful, obviously. Fanciful, dignified chicken strips it would be. Yeah, what is wrong with her? <laughs> what teacher is this? This is my English teacher that loves me. Which what? one? Purple hair? No, no. no. That's art the teacher. one we gave the books to. Oh. Austin Tucker. See if she gets book An ode free. to chicken <laughs> strips. Oh, man. <laughs> Things get intense. I break forth towards my <laughs> mouth, towards my two prone lips. What? Oh, how no. I love... This plate of golden chicken strips. You're just not an Austin Tucker. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, no. I couldn't possibly compete with that shit. <laughs> Why did you guys laugh so much at, but alas, no bass? <laughs> it's not that's bass! The worst, we that's the worst line in the history bass. of poetry. You're talking about alas, no bass. You're talking about Lance Bass. 
a base, babe. A base. <laughs> yeah, it's a base. Yeah. You just said it as that. Well, it's oh. it's a way of twisting the twang. It's asking oh, you the twang. Oh, it's a form of artistic escapism. It's oh. asking you to see it in a new light. See, it's artistic That's escapism. A fish. Wait, wait. You guys, so what you're saying no, is that's no fish. That makes sense. From a certain point of view, yeah. you guys aren't. You guys just you aren't smart enough to understand. But alas, oh. no. to be fair, you have, to have pretty you, high IQ to yeah. understand yeah. all this poetry. Why don't you pull the oh, Ghostbusters okay. thing and say we hate women and that's why we don't get it? <laughs> and then tell me there's more. Is there more? Unfortunately not. Poems? Oh, yeah, no. there needs to be a, a an opus of the size of Homestuck. I bet you people are gonna yeah. want to print that out and hang it on their walls. Babies. If you if you ever write a web comic or a, a, a movie or something, you have to reference this poem in it. I mean, One I, day on Roadshow, American Roadshow, that antique Roadshow, oh. people are going to want What, are they going to have a digital copy of his poem? Yeah, and it's going to be autographed, oh and it's going to be worth billions. How are they going to be digitally <laughs> autographed? Um, <laughs> if, if for those who are curious who want more of this, I wrote a Halloween scary story. I oh, wrote oh a, my God. Wait, is there, can we see more? If you'd like to, hear, to see more of things that remind you of Austin's writing, <laughs> just take a good look before you flush next time. <laughs> Austin is a writer. He's fabulous. Oh, oh. this one little poem again. I, um, I have read his work. Under he's the talented. rug? Yeah, as a writer, as a writer Austin, I think you're a really good um, visual artist. Yes, I know I am. <laughs> uh, I also did a really good um, presentation on Elton John. I guess you do that. <laughs> wow. Does he play the bass? I, or? Yeah, I, I did another one on David Bowie. I did two on Walt Disney. I we used that one twice. It felt good. It was a good uh, article. I, I did some Mozart? presentations. What? Walmart? Oh, yeah, this is hot garbage. This is my Halloween story called Terminated Employment, if you want to read it. No. Oh. Can we wrap this episode okay, up? Okay. I can listen to your writing. Oh, I need to God. read you my entire Homestuck fan comic. <laughs> it's 200 pages. <laughs> this is Will, by the way. Uh huh. All right, well, thanks for everybody for tuning in to this action packed episode, this poetry, prose filled episode of. 91 Reasons. Alas, no bass. <laughs> Thanks for listening. My Grand Thar's Hammer will be back with another episode. Live long and prosper. May the force be with you. So say we all. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs>